to an episode of Dabbling with Dan. Today we're going to go ahead and go over my personal journey with uh, trying to get my flight physical medical renewed and the hurdles that you have to jump through. Um, everybody, I want to introduce you to Steve, a good friend. Hi. Steve and I went to California back in October of 2021 and uh, we took uh, a trip to Palm Springs. California. Well, that was pretty fun, wasn't it? Awesome. It was. A, it's the best. Yeah. Highly recommend it. And one of the things we, Steve and I went ahead and did, we went to a air museum, Palm Springs Air Museum, and I will recommend that to anybody. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a museum that you can go ahead and see airplanes that have been in World War II that will actually go flying later that afternoon. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty impressive. with a lot of my viewers is that uh, I used to fly airplanes hmm. and 10 years ago this year I had a heart attack and Steve uh, Steve has a background in medicine and I've asked him to kind of join me today because Steve can going to help me uh, explain some of the terminology that the FAA has sent to me stating if you want to get your physical renewed you got to meet these requirements right. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a heart attack, but this is my heart attack. Here's the heart attack right here, this artery. And then over here, they, they, they fixed it and then they had all this blood flow, okay? Once I had my heart attack, Steve, I had to self ground. What that requires you is not to fly anymore right as pilot in command and back in 1990 is when i got my pilot's license and i've been flying for about uh about 17 years then i had mm. a heart attack wow <sighs> when i got got the news that i couldn't fly anymore it was it was pretty pretty bad news i'm sure demoralizing um, yeah but you came around <laughs> and you helped me go ahead and like explore aviation by going to these museums and i thought well to let you guys know when you have a heart attack every five years your insurance will pay for what's called a nuclear stress test uh, i'm on my 10th year so i thought and this was in October when we went to the Palm Springs. Okay. In November is when I had my nuclear stress test. So in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. Now, Steve, you, you work in medicine. A nuclear stress test costs about how much? Probably about $10,000, maybe even a little more, depending. Oh yeah. Personally, I wasn't gonna spend that much money to go ahead and, and fly again. No. But. Since insurance was gonna pay for it, I'm gonna go ahead and say, hmm, what do I need to do to go ahead and at least apply for what's called a special issuance medical? Before I had that nuclear stress test, I contacted AOPA. And of course, the ball cap I'm wearing right now is from them, and they have been wonderful. I paid about 180 plus dollars to go ahead and get a membership that basically gets their staff who are medical renewals involved in my flying okay. life and what they told me was this dan you got to do this you got to do this you got to do this and this and i thought this would be a great opportunity to go ahead and share with you my audience what you need to do if let's say you have heart issues and you want and you were a pilot and you want to get back in the cockpit Steve, I went ahead and uh, gave you a, a copy of my letter that the FAA sent me. And this is basically, I got this about a month ago. And this was after I went ahead and got a flight physical. It says, we reviewed your medical examination based upon our initial review. 
of this information, we are unable to establish your eligibility to hold an Airman Medical Certificate at this time. It appears that the only way for you to obtain a medical certificate is by applying for special issuance under Title 14 of the Code of the Federal Regulations, Section 67.401. Steve, as, as you look through this letter, as we move on down, it says, uh, at the bottom of the page, it says, due to the history of coronary artery disease, and that's basically having a heart attack. So what they want, they're saying, submit these six hospital records from each cardiac event, procedure, slash intervention, or heart surgery. So they want an admission summary, right? A history and physical, yeah. Emergency department physician report if you went through the ER, coronary catheterization reports. So you, what is you, that exactly? That's when they actually um, put a catheter in through the groin and inject dye into the heart and okay. look at the vasculature of the heart, and things will light up to show if if the blood vessels are open, if blood's flowing properly the way it should. And I tell you, I also, you know, I remember this day um, when I was in the emergency room and I remember that I was laying down and they were doing surgery on me and I saw the monitors mm -hmm. and I could see my heart pumping. Right. And I could see the dye being uh, like injected my, through there. And, and my blood kind of, you right. could see where the artery was that was clogged. Right. So, and they put it, the, you said it was the left circumflex. Yes. So they put a, there was an occlusion, a blockage, a clot broke off and blocked that artery. So right. basically they opened that up with um, some anti, um, act, some, some basically some things to dissolve the clot and then they put a stent in to keep it open. Okay. So they wanted, the, so the FAA wants that report from the hospital. Yeah, they want that report. And also any operative reports and a discharge summary, basically just going over the whole thing as to what they did and what they found and any applicable findings or whatever. Uh, audience, that was at the time of my heart attack. So right. what I had done, Steve, is I contacted the hospital who sent me to their records department. Okay. And collectors. I paid about $25 to get my full medical uh, report back from the hospital. Mm. So I was in the hospital for three days yeah, okay. and what I have done here is I, I collected all this information and put it in a three ring binder and really the last inch of this paperwork is my medical report. Wow. And it, it has notes from the nurses when they came in and checked me. Mm. So the FAA wants all that information. All right, so on this letter they sent, they also want a current history of the clinical examination from your treating cardiologist and the report must address the following. So we're down here. So, so symptoms and diagnosis, comorbidities, that would mean other diseases that you have that might affect things like diabetes, high blood pressure, okay, things of that nature. Dates of treatment, intervention, surgery, history including family history, any sure. risk factors medications that you're on, name, dosage, frequency, side effects. And, and that is part of what was holding you up. You were on a medicine, which I'm sure you'll go into later. Which yeah. You're not allowed to be on and get your license back. That's correct. You know, I told you a little earlier that the AOPA, which has been extremely helpful, is they have a database where you can go in and you can type in all the medicines that you've been prescribed. Mm. And if any of those medicines are on the no-fly list, it will tell you that. Okay. So I actually had a couple medicines that were on the no-fly list. So during my last uh, nuclear stress test, I had a conversation with my cardiologist explaining to them that I was really interested in flying again and that is there any way that I could come off these medicines? Mm. They said absolutely. They, they, they looked at my, my progress on my... Um, there's a, 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 one of those treadmill tests. Right. Treadmill and test. they said I did an outstanding a job. treadmill stress test. Uh, they went ahead and took me off those medicines, and that was a big plus. So what this else? is, and it's not that he's not on any medicines. I mean, you're on some medicines. But, yeah. 
but they but the classifications of medicines that they prohibit are specifically like vasodilators, drugs that dilate blood vessels, okay. that, which are nitroglycerin based. They there it could be possible that you know your cardiologist could substitute a different medication that does the same thing, but yet is not on this list of the do not fly. So drugs. so I asked my cardiologist. I said, just curious, why are these medicines that I would be uh, uh, that I was on would be prohibited. And they said like as you fly and you go up into higher altitudes mm -hmm. that your 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 blood pressure could drop and you could just pass out. Right. So that would be a bad thing. That would be a bad thing. <laughs> okay, and what's what else is on here? Um ongoing treatment, surveillance plan, prognosis. Okay. Has the applicant completed cardiac rehabilitation if which, required? Which I did. And, and that's good. And successfully completed. And has the applicant been released from all restrictions, may resume full activities without limitations, which he's able to. Right. Able to walk, ride bicycle, kayak, active, you know, maintains an active job, active employment. And what is the risk of recurrence? Restenosis, that would mean the artery reoccluding, complications or sudden incapacitation. Okay. And of course, it says submitting a report that does not address all these items spe specified will delay the processing of your application for medical recertification. Okay. After my nuclear stress test and successful completion of that, um, we're going to go into more details about what exactly, uh, what the FAA wanted on that. I had to go ahead and submit all this information to the flight medical examiner. That, uh, I had found through the AOPA website, which, you know, you type in your zip code, okay. Steve. And it tells you who's closest. Okay, that's good. And I found the physician, and he had been wonderful. He is also a pilot, and he also had mm, medical issues. Wow. And he knew exactly what I was going to be facing. Okay. Very, very helpful. Very, very, helpful. very helpful. Now, one of the things also that the FAA sent me was a pilot's bill of rights uh, notification. So I think everybody should know that... If you get into a situation like I had, where you have a heart attack, and you're a pilot, and the next thing you know, you, you can't fly anymore, that you do have rights. They sent me this documentation that basically states that the information you submit to the, on the FA Form 8500-8 application for the Airman Medical Certificate, and any other information you provide in connection with your application will be used by the administrator of FAAA, okay? So you have to file an application. Right. You're going to put this information down, and it's going to be part of your record, your, your permanent record. Be truthful. Be honest. Put that information out there. And, of course, at the end of the day, it's really up to the FAA. Right. They, they want to make sure that you're, you're a safe pilot. Sure. And that if you're going to be in a plane flying above homes, cities, or whatnot, right. that you're not going to have a reoccurrence. Sure. The things that you have to submit to the FAA are, are, are very, actually kind of pretty simple. They have a, a team of about maybe five to eight employees that basically will help you um, prep your your documentation okay so that when you send this off and one of the, the interesting things was um when i told you i had a nuclear stress test mm. well what that incl includes is you get on a treadmill and you you have to do a a, a nine minute treadmill i've been there and done it you loved it i've done it but <laughs> i don't say i love it but <laughs> <laughs> okay well because of my health, I did 12 minutes. That's great. And they said, hey, that's going to be really nice for the, uh, the FAA. But this is what you also have to send to them. So when I went and got my flight physical okay. uh, from the air examiner, these are called tracings for 
the the treadmill thing I did. Right. So it's basically a continuous electrocardiogram reading that they're doing while you're on the treadmill. Right. So they can correlate the um, amount of energy you're expending, what they call METS, M-E-T-S, with your heart tracing, okay. your electrocardiographic activity. And of course they're measuring your blood pressure and vital, and vital signs, you know, while you're doing it the whole time to make sure that everything is within normal limits. After uh, my test was uh, concluded, of course, but even before the test was concluded, I told the technician that I was trying to get my, my FAA uh, flight medical renewed. Okay. He said, don't tear these. Do keep, not tear. Keep it all continuous. Keep it all continuous okay. because uh, what they're going to do, they're going to scan all of this information right. and submit it to the FAA so their physicians can look at it and make sure that your heart's doing the right thing, right? And they want to make sure that nobody tore out pieces that had bad, <laughs> bad tracings and tried to fudge the FAA. Exactly. I also had to go to a regular doctor and I had to get a blood test. And in that blood test, I had to go in there and I, I couldn't eat anything before it. Okay. And when they drew my blood, Steve, they went ahead and they were looking for specific things that uh, the FAA was looking for. It's like my LDL and- Yeah, your cholesterol levels. They want to fractionate the cholesterol. Look at LDL, HDL to check your cholesterol, which, you know, elevated cholesterol is a risk factor for heart attack. Right. And they would have looked at your triglycerides. Sure. And they would have looked at, you know, checked your blood sugar. The The reason it's fasting is because if you eat right before you go in, that's going to affect your cholesterol and your blood sugar and things like that. Okay. Because they want fasting level. Another thing about when you submit your paperwork to the FAA, they have a timeline. What they want is you gather all this information within like 90 days. Okay. If I went to my medical doctor and got this blood test 92 days ago, they'd be like, it's too old. Yeah. yeah. So they, they want it really well within, you know, I did everything within like 39 days. Yeah, that's good. I, I can say, that was that was a hurdle. Trying to go ahead and, and coordinate when you get your nuclear stress test, your your your, your physical, EK, physical EKG, I mean the blood work, everything. Everything needs to fall right into place. Okay. Now the other thing that I went ahead and sent them was obviously my report from the hospital my actual okay. emergency report. And then on top of that, um, uh, submitted these, uh, remember I showed you a little earlier, I, I'm hoping it came out, my pictures of my heart before and after. Yeah. They wanted something in that digital format that they could read that and see that, okay, there's no other, uh, I guess, blockages. Right, right. Okay. And the car, you did the cardiac catheterization, so that would show, the report of that would show any, any blockages that weren't recognized right. before. It, it, and it did, actually. I remember getting that report, and it said, you know, you had some, a little bit of blockage here, I guess plaque, mm, plaque. In, in the artery there, and a little bit there, but it was well under, uh, I guess they're, they're, we're not going to put a stent in there, unless it's Right, like, right. So how, how high would they put a stent in it? It's pretty, in, like in the 90s, isn't it? Well, well it, when it gets above 50%, especially above 70%, that's when there's concern. Okay. So it's, it's, like a, it's like a pipe. I mean, when you have a pipe, you know, an inch in diameter, if all of a sudden you make it half an inch, you're not going to get nearly the flow through that. So they okay. want to make sure that you have, you know, adequate circulation to all areas of the heart. This is 2022, and it's been 10 years since my heart attack. Mm -hmm. October, we're what, January for March? Mm -hmm. So that was what, five months ago when mm -hmm. I started this. Right. And a month ago, 
So in February 2022, I got a letter from the FAA saying, we looked at your information, Dan. Right now, we're not looking like you're going to get a third class medical renewal, but if you want to apply for a special issuance, we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Yesterday, I got a, a certified letter from the FAA and I thought I'd go ahead and open it in front of everybody here. He hasn't opened it yet, no. but I can't believe it. I'm a little bit like nervous. Like I wouldn't have slept last night. Well, I did. I slept like a log actually. But it could be just saying, hey, Dan, you need to go ahead and do some more information for us, submit more reports, or it might be we're going to let you fly. That's what we're hoping and praying. So this is the letter, everyone. And of course, you know, I had to go to the post office to go ahead and sign off for it. So Steve, because, well, let's just say you're my <laughs> best friend. I'm, I'm hoping that it's good news. Now, I'm hoping too. Let's see. It looks kind of similar to basically what we got in the mail the other day. Oh, it's the same letter, isn't it? Whoa. Yeah. Why are they, they, they saying it's certified? Because it's the government. Oh, good. Yes. Because it's the government. Okay. Right now, there's a little killjoy going on. It says on we're here. unable to establish your eligibility to hold an Airman Medical certificate, certificate at this time. It's the same thing. It appears the only way to obtain a medical certificate by applying for a special issuance. That's what you did. Well, I think what happens... ...note that your medical certification has not been denied. However, if no reply is received within 60 days of the day of this letter, we will either refer your case for legal enforcement... This is the same letter you got before. Yeah, so it just came via All certified letter. Okay, well, hold on. Okay. So for the audience, this is a small, what, speed bump? Speed bump, not a hurdle, a yeah. speed bump. It's just a small beat speed bump. It needed to be sent. Certified. And, and what I will do, I will keep everyone informed of the next step. So this is what the next step is. After 90 days of getting my physical from the flight surgeon, okay. I can then contact the AOPA, and what they will do is they will contact the FAA okay. and advocate for me. It was like, okay. hey, this guy went ahead and met all these requirements. What's going on? Right, and as the audience can see, the importance of being a membership of, oh. of the AOPA. I mean, because yeah, it's, it's, they've been they're, great. It was well worth the money, and they're they're advocating on your behalf to to help ensure your goal of getting back in the sky again. Absolutely. So will you go fly with me? If I, I will. I will. That's the biggest mistake. I will. <laughs> no, <laughs> sir. That's not all in there. Well, we'll, we'll edit that one edit out. Edit that part out. <laughs> I have full faith and confidence and trust in this man to fly or do whatever. Well, thank you. Well, listen, I want to thank you guys for joining me in this uh, journey. And of course, uh, we'll keep you up to date. I'm hoping within the next month to get another certified letter. Yes. Maybe this time it'll have my medical certificate in it. And don't tear your EKG apart. Absolutely. Leave it, leave it all continuous, just the way Dan said. Exactly. Hey, thanks right. a lot for joining us. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Steve, thanks for joining me. Yes, sir. I appreciate right. it. Appreciate you. All okay. Right. Godspeed. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.